Humane Vitae, which was an encyclical of Pope Paul VI, and it's of enormous importance. Now, everyone should read it. If you haven't read it yet, read it. If you've already read it, read it again. You can get it in almost any Catholic bookstore, the Daughters of St. Paul, the documents of Vatican II, the post-conciliar documents, they have it. It's an enormously important document. It's not very long. It's, it's relatively short. There's been tremendous controversy over it. A lot of people have rejected it. A lot of theologians, a lot of priests have rejected it. What does that say? Well, it says just this, that we priests and theologians struggle with fidelity, just like you married people struggle with fidelity. But we're called to be faithful. Faithful whether we like it or not, whether it hurts or not, whether we agree with it or not, we're called to be faithful. And so Humani Vitae in number one says that the most serious duty of transmitting human life for, for which married persons are the free and responsible collaborators of God the Creator has always been a source of great joy to them, even if sometimes accompanied by not a few difficulties and by distress. At all times, the fulfillment of this duty has posed grave problems to the conscience of married persons. But with the recent evolution of society, changes have taken place that give rise to new questions which the church could not ignore, having to do with a matter which so closely touches upon the life and happiness of men. This question of artificial contraception is of enormous importance. Tied up in the very fabric of being, this question of the openness to the transmission of new life is at the heart of a great many of the problems we have in society today. A great many have said, well, why shouldn't a couple be free to use artificial contraception? Take the birth control pill, so forth and so on. Number one, because it's against nature. It's a sin against nature, against the intrinsic reality of marriage. It's a sin against God's divine law, which is manifested in the natural law. It's a sin against ourselves. Would you say, but aren't we masters over our own destiny? And I say, what a stupid question. <laughs> of course not. God is the master of our destiny, and we collaborate with him. The truth was taught faithfully by a successor of St. Peter, Pope Paul VI. All of the popes in recent times have been great men, saintly men, highly educated men, more than anything though, holy men. That's what's important. At a time in history when it was not easy to do so, a courageous successor of St. Peter asserted boldly and clearly the immutable truth that which has been taught always and everywhere in the history of the church and never once was it ever not taught. Never once has the church ever anywhere taught that artificial contraception and its unholy offspring abortion is acceptable. And the cursed reasoning that you can just follow your conscience is absurd. Because they don't say what conscience. There is no such thing as conscience in a vacuum. Conscience is not an independent entity. Conscience must be formed. Formed to what? Formed to the objective norm of church teaching, to the truth, which is not whatever you or I want it to be, which is not a subjective construct. The Holy Father taught that truth in the encyclical Humanae Vitae. And in this city, in this country, something like a hundred 
out of whatever it was, I don't know the exact number, I think there were only six bishops that went against the dissenter. They better repent of their sin because I'm going to tell you something straight out. A rapist or murderer has a higher place in hell than someone who leads little ones astray through false teaching, especially false moral teaching, for the one defiles the body and the other defiles the soul. God help us. We have to continue to pray very, very much.